I'm the director of the extreme event and climate risk at the Geneva Association. Geneva Association is an international insurance think tank that was established in 1973. It's an association of 80 CEOs from insurance and reinsurance industry. The role of Geneva Association is to tackle highly strategic issues of most relevant to the insurance sector, as well as economic issues that are driving uh, important topics for the insurance sector. And specifically, I'm tackling uh, topics on extreme event and climate risk management there. The issue of data challenges at national, regional, and international, it's certainly a very important issue in general for the field of risk management, but also is particularly important to uh, when you want to develop insurance products. Um, I had the opportunity uh, for the last 10 years before I joined Geneva Association to work as a head of uh, an international program for disaster risk management and reduction at World Meteorological Organization. That is the specialized United Nations agency that's responsible for coordination and negotiation of data and modeling issues when it comes to extreme weather, climate, and hydrological issues. Um, I had the opportunity of working with around 170 countries and we managed to really map uh, the status of how they are monitoring weather, how they are uh, maintaining data, and what are their policies in exchanging data. Based on that experience, what we have discovered is, particularly in the developing and least developed countries, the Observing networks are extremely difficult to maintain. It's very costly to have a network that observes with the, the whole climate system and the weather inside it. Um, also, what we found is the technical expertise to maintain the observing networks is definitely a big challenge. Now, when it comes to data quality and data accessibility, there are several factors that are limiting that at national, regional, and international. The first factor is data. For many countries, it's considered a national security. In other words, they don't exchange the data because fundamentally and competitively, it's important for the, for the sovereign security. The second factor that makes data inaccessible, it's the commercial value of data. Um, as you know, uh, developing and maintaining observing networks is quite costly. So in many countries, they try to sell the data so that with the money they earn from it, they can subsidize the infrastructure. However, in many cases, when the money is earned from data is not necessarily invested back in the data infrastructure. The third element is that many countries, because of their limited capacity, don't have the data, or the data is still on paper. You know, it's been collected over the years using manual means, not the latest technologies. And these piles of data on paper is rotting away in various, you know, uh, places. And there is absolute need for data digitization. And then finally, when you work within the national boundaries, there are different organizations that are collecting the data. So the data has almost like a competitive value, and institutions don't exchange that to sort of maintain their own power in the whole data race and data regime. And then finally, when it comes to flood data, it's extremely political because rivers cross national boundaries and sometimes depending on the politics of the region governments may not want to work together and share that data as it has massive political implications. Actually some really excellent examples of international cooperation among governments. Um, I want to go back and share with you how that happens. Um, essentially there are two international resolutions that have been negotiated by World Meteorological Organization. First one is called Resolution 40 for exchange of critical weather data. 
Uh, the other one is Resolution 25, which is for exchange of critical hydrological data. These two resolutions were negotiated in 1990s, engaging the national meteorological and hydrological agencies of different governments. What that did is got governments together to agree for exchange of data that's needed to be able to monitor, detect, and develop early warnings. So when you look today, you can see that early warnings for tropical cyclones, for example, is readily available. Um, and this is owing to that international cooperation and sharing of data through what's called the global telecommunication system of World Meteorological Organization that connects 191 countries through their national meteorological services. However, this data is not readily accessible in public. It's only available among the governments through their national meteorological services. When the data is collected, that data is passed on to certain regional centers who analyze the data, do forecasting of the upcoming extreme event, and then share that data back with the National Meteorological Organization to issue national warning systems, like issuance of warnings for the high, you know, hurricanes and tropical cyclones. This network is not publicly available, and there is need for advancing these negotiations to really engage for the next round of data exchange, which means availability of data for applications such as insurance and others. I really believe the very first thing that we need to do is look at the countries. When you look at the countries, you see that observing networks and data management systems are breaking up. They are not sustained. So part of what needs to be done is governments need to look at data as a major development issue. Data has to be part of prioritization in their development funding. Because without data, there is no risk analysis. And without risk information, there is no good risk-based decision making to reduce that. Beyond uh, that issue, um, I think we need to also think about international cooperation and bringing the data exchange and accessibility to a whole new different level where it's not that just the national meteorological services that are deciding, but really the higher level of governments that are engaged in risk management. Given that solving the issues of risk, for example, risk in agriculture, has impact on many sectors and has significant impact on economic development and sustainability and livelihood of the population, I think the discussion of data exchange and its availability to private sector, it's something that really needs to be tackled at the ministerial level. Finally, there is the technical side where unfortunately, particularly in the developing and least developed countries, as we are educating and training more technical experts in observing, monitoring, and building databases, there is a lot of uh, more of a brain drain from the government to the industry. So we need to maintain real experts on board in organizations that are collecting the data so that the quality of data could be assured. And then finally, there is need for international standards. If you go to different countries, you see that they are monitoring and maintaining the databases per different standards when it comes to applications like agricultural insurance. This is not the case when it comes to uh, early warning systems. But for new applications, we need new standards for what is required for meteorological data to best service new applications such as agricultural insurance. And I think that really pushes the topic to international organizations that have the role for setting international standards. Music